This video is going to give you an introduction to our final new probability distribution, the exponential distribution. Let's actually use the same example for motivation for the exponential distribution as we did for the Poisson distribution. A professor's office hours last from 9 to 10 a.m., he counts the number of students who come in for assistance, and he knows that historically there's an average of three students per hour. What he can do is he can look at the clock and see what time each of his students comes in for help. The first one shows up at 9.03, the second one shows up at 9.20, the third one shows up at 9.32, and the final student arrives at 9.55. Now for the Poisson distribution, this was all we were concerned about. We were concerned about the number of students who showed up in this period of time. With the exponential distribution, we're actually concerned about something else. We're concerned about the amount of time it takes between arrivals. So really what we're looking at is the 17 minute difference between 9.03 and 9.20, the 12 minute difference between 9.20 and 9.32, and the 23 minute difference between arrivals from 9.32 to 9.55. Now the value of this Poisson random variable was going to be x equal to 4. For the exponential distribution though, these times turn out to be our exponential random variables. In the exponential distribution, we're concerned about the amount of time between arrivals, not the number of arrivals. To formally define it, the exponential distribution is a continuous probability distribution that describes the amount of time needed to wait between two arrivals. In an exponential distribution, the random variable of interest is always the amount of time. We're always concerned about how much time elapses between two arrivals. The exponential distribution has a single parameter denoted by lambda. Lambda is defined to be the average number of arrivals per unit time. So it turns out that this lambda is exactly the same as the Poisson distribution. Lambda in the Poisson distribution was the average number of arrivals in a given period of time. We use that exact same parameter for the exponential distribution. So it turns out that lambda connects the Poisson and the exponential distribution. They're directly related to one another. In the exponential distribution, we can calculate the average amount of time needed to wait between arrivals. And that average amount of time is 1 over the parameter, 1 over lambda. I want to give you a couple of facts about the exponential distribution. Taking a look at the picture down at the bottom, what you should first notice is that the exponential distribution changes shape depending on the parameter lambda. As you increase lambda, the peak of the distribution gets higher and higher. The exponential distribution is not symmetric. What you should notice is that the exponential distribution peaks at zero and then steadily declines as you increase x. What this means is that the distribution is right skewed. Also notice that the sample space for the exponential distribution goes from zero all the way up to positive infinity. The reason for this is because the exponential distribution is a measure of the amount of time between two arrivals. You can never have a negative amount of time, which is why the lower bound is zero. And you could potentially be waiting for forever before the next arrival, which is why your upper bound is technically positive infinity. Calculating exponential distribution probabilities is actually a little bit different than anything else that we've done so far because it turns out there's a different equation that you need depending on the situation that you're looking at. Let's suppose that x is an exponential random variable and that the unit of time that we're using is minutes. You can use any unit of time that you want. You can use months, you can use years, seconds. For this particular example, we'll use minutes, but really you can change that to whatever unit of time that you happen to be using in the problem. Then the probability that the next arrival occurs in more than k minutes is going to be e to the negative lambda times k. Less than k minutes is going to be 1 minus e to the negative lambda times k. And between k1 and k2 minutes, k1 and k2 are just units of time, where k1 is less than k2, that probability is going to be e to the negative lambda times k1 minus e to the negative lambda times k2. So depending on if you're looking for a probability greater than k, less than k, 
or between two units of time, k1 and k2, you have a different equation that you're going to be substituting in these numbers into. As a quick reminder, e is just the base of the natural logarithm equal to approximately 2.718. Let me show you an example of each of the three different equations that we use to calculate exponential distribution probabilities. The amount of time it takes to make a bank transaction follows an exponential distribution with parameter lambda equal to 0.2 per minute. If the person ahead of you steps up to the only teller in the bank, we want to find three different probabilities. We want to find the probability that you have to wait less than three minutes, more than seven minutes, or between three and seven minutes. To tackle the first question, we want to know what is the probability that you wait less than three minutes. What we can do is draw the picture. Draw your exponential distribution, and we shade in the area less than three. Draw your line at three. We want all of the area from zero to three. So because we're looking at the probability that x is less than three, the equation that we want to use is going to be 1 minus e to the negative lambda k. What we want is the probability that x is less than 3. In this case, our k is going to be equal to 3. So we take the 3, plug it into the equation. The probability we wait less than 3 minutes is 1 minus e to the negative 0.2 times 3. This is 1 minus e to the negative 0.6. 1 minus 0.5488 once you plug that into your calculator. And so in the end, you end up with a final probability of 0.4512. The probability that you wait less than three minutes is 0.4512. We can do a similar thing for the second probability, the probability that you wait more than seven minutes. Again, draw your picture, you find seven on the picture, and you shade in all of the area from seven up to positive infinity. The picture only goes up to 19, but the sample space technically goes all the way up to positive infinity. Since you're looking for the area above 7, the equation that we're going to use is e to the negative lambda times k. So the probability that you wait longer than 7 minutes is going to be e to the negative 0.2 times 7. This gives you e to the negative 1.4 which is 0.246. So the probability that you wait longer than seven minutes after that next person in front of you steps to the teller is 0.246. And finally, we want the probability that you wait between three and seven minutes before being able to step up to the teller. Again, draw your picture and shade in the region between three and seven on the exponential distribution. Since you're looking for the area between two numbers, the equation that we're going to use is e to the negative lambda times k1, where k1 is your lower endpoint 3, minus e to the negative lambda times k2, where k2 is your larger endpoint, which is 7. Then the probability that x is between 3 and 7 is going to be e to the negative 0.2 times 3, minus e to the negative 0.2 times 7. This gives us e to the negative 0.6 minus e to the negative 1.4, which is 0.5488 minus 0.2466. And your final probability in this case is 0.3022. Now these are just the simplest types of problems that we have with the exponential distribution. Just like the Poisson distribution, there are situations where you have to make modifications, you have to make changes along the way. But we'll take a look at some of those cases in class.